Good day. Now, I want to share something important a message from the Lord concerning Elon Musk. Recently, he's made some notable appearances and taken specific stances. God gave me a clear word about him, what he'll be doing, and how the Lord is using him in this time. It's fascinating. As Christians, we can sometimes get to focused on judging what others are doing or trying to figure out their hearts, but the real point is to look inward at our own hearts and ask God to change us first. When our hearts are changed, our actions will follow. When we share the love of Christ, preach the gospel, or deliver a word from the Lord, God has the opportunity to touch someone else's heart. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. When we tell people that Jesus loves them and died for them, so they can be forgiven, they hear the truth and have the chance to be set free. Their lives can be completely transformed through this message. This is from Matthew 5 to 8, which says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Many of us want to see God working in the world today, but remember that while people look at outward appearances, God looks at the heart. God is still looking at hearts today. This isn't a message of judgment. It's the Holy Spirit reaching out in love, asking us to surrender what's in our hearts to Him. I hear the Lord saying, He can do much more through a generation of people who surrender daily to His presence and the Holy Spirit's voice than He can through people who look good on the outside but don't have God in their hearts. This is an important reminder for us. God can still use someone even if their heart isn't in the right place. I believe that's happening today in many ways. On September 20th, I received a vision from the Lord about Elon Musk, SpaceX, and some decisions he's making, including political ones. I don't fully understand this vision. It may be metaphorical or have parts that will literally happen in the future. We'll have to wait and see how things play out. The purpose of prophecy is to lead people to salvation. It's evidence of God's presence, especially for unbelievers, and it gives us a chance to share the gospel. When a word is confirmed, it shows that the message being preached is true. God has given me a consistent message to share. The New Covenant, under the New Covenant, we are no longer under the law of Moses, but under grace. This doesn't mean we excuse sin, but we walk in righteousness because we've been made righteous by God. We follow the Holy Spirit out of love, not fear, and we're on a journey with Him. Now, about the vision. I saw astronauts on the moon gathered and collaborating over something. Then, I saw a large hand place a moon base or ship in the landscape behind them. This felt metaphorical, representing the plans of men. After that, I saw the Eiffel Tower on the moon. I don't believe this means someone will literally build the Eiffel Tower there, but perhaps it represents a connection with the French government or leaders. The Lord said, I was seeing multiple upcoming projects related to the moon landing, and he mentioned proof coming from a major player in space exploration. This might be related to the question of whether the moon landing really happened, with someone trying to prove it. Then the Lord mentioned Elon Musk and SpaceX, saying there's a movement to prove something. I feel that there are multiple proofs involved. Perhaps Elon Musk is trying to prove something that people thought was impossible. This vision is interesting, but also complicated, so we'll have to wait and see how it all turns out. The main idea I got from this is that it's connected to the mission to Mars and what Elon Musk is trying to achieve in space. The Lord also mentioned the moon landing mission being put on hold for a new strategy where people will follow in the steps of pioneers to travel to other planets. This journey may seem difficult, but it will give hope to those who have lost faith in a better future. God is talking about restoring hope especially for those who feel like the future of our planet or society is uncertain. When people lose hope, they can become negative or depressed. But as Christians, we have hope because we know the future is in God's hands. Nothing ends until God decides it's over and He is in control of everything. Until that moment comes, we don't need to fear what others fear like an asteroid or any other disaster because if God hasn't declared the end, 
it's not the end. On October 3rd, I heard the Lord speak about Elon Musk again. God said he has put Musk in this time for a purpose and is using him in ways that most people can't understand right now. Even believers don't fully see all that God is doing through him. The Lord told me not to judge too quickly because there's a bigger plan unfolding. God also said he can anoint people, even those who aren't godly, for a specific time or purpose to carry out his will. While God always fulfills his sovereign will, some things depend on human choices. God doesn't force his will. He gives us free will to choose him. That's what true love is allowing us the freedom to decide. Even though it means we might not always choose what God desires for us. The kings of the past were supposed to follow God with their whole hearts and lead the nation to him. But they didn't because of their poor choices. God's perfect plan for that nation didn't happen. The same thing is happening today with believers. Sometimes we think we are separate from God's plan, but we are actually part of it. Christians are God's plan on earth. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Recently, I told a friend who's going through hard times and I'm going through some challenges too, that being the hands and feet of Jesus isn't easy. It hurts sometimes because people will reject you. Even when you try to love people and help them in the name of Christ, they may not accept it. But this is what God calls us to do as Christians. Now, I don't believe people like Elon Musk carry the same anointing as a Christian, but I do think God is using him for certain purposes, for example, protecting freedoms that allow us to keep sharing the gospel. If those freedoms disappear, it becomes harder to share Jesus, but we shouldn't put all our hope in people, no matter how powerful or smart they are. Our hope should be in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. God is showing the world that we can't save ourselves. Even someone like Elon Musk can fall into the trap of thinking he can fix everything, but without Jesus, any temporary fixes don't last. We need the ultimate solution, which is Jesus Christ. God also said we should find hope in him every day. Everything else will fade away, but his glory will stay with us because he is within us. If we believe in Jesus, his Holy Spirit lives inside us and he will never leave. So no matter what happens in the world, we can trust in God and stand for the things he calls us to stand for. As Christians, we must be honest and live by God's truth, sharing the gospel and living by the Holy Spirit. When we ask God to fill us with his spirit, he will help us turn away from sin. Jesus said, if we ask, we will receive. So we should keep seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, it's not about us. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus as Lord. God has given us the light of Christ, and as believers, we are also called the light of the world. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we share Jesus with others naturally. This is what God has called us to do, to speak the truth in love, stand up for what's right, and show others the love of Christ.